today we will be talking about one of the five principles of environmental law, the principle of non-discrimination. And to do this, we will first take you on a virtual trip to Vieques. Vieques is a beautiful Caribbean island just east of Puerto Rico. Every year, many tourists visit this island to enjoy the beautiful beaches and unspoiled nature. In fact, Vieques is home to the largest wildlife refuge in the Caribbean. Little do most people know, this area underwent a tremendous amount of military activity over the last half of the 20th century. In the 1940s, the U.S. military took control of more than two-thirds of the island, forcibly removing the inhabitants to the small central part of the island. The east and west sides of the island were used as test and practice sites for bombing and general military exercises. This ended all agricultural activities in the area and pushed the population into an economic depression marked by high unemployment, widespread reliance on welfare programs, and dependence on imported food products. In the 1960s, inhabitants first started to protest the presence of the military. They argued that their lives and health were compromised by the bombs. Due to the direction of the prevailing trade winds, the populated area of Vieques lies directly downwind from the area of the bombing. It was only when the Navy started to severely restrict access to parts of the ocean that the fishermen of Vieques became one of the first groups to actively protest the military's activities. Despite all of their efforts, it wasn't until 2003 that the military gave up control of most of the island. After leaving the site, it was labeled as a natural area. Later, multiple studies concluded that the area was highly contaminated. The chemical residues that have been detected in the soil and water caused by the bombs and accumulation of residues from the air are at an unsafe level for human health, and it suggested that this could also impact the fish living in the water surrounding the area. In 2005, the United States Environmental Protection Agency listed Vieques Bombing Range as a Superfund site. These are polluted locations in the United States requiring a long-term response to clean up hazardous material contaminations. Unfortunately, the story of Vieques is a very common one. In an international context, it can be relatively easy for powerful governments, corporations, or institutions to exploit those with less power. In these situations, the environmental burden of pollution or overexploitation can be offloaded onto a neighboring country or community. For example, it is often the countries that contribute the least to anthropogenic climate change that are the most burdened with its consequences. The principle of non-discrimination was created to address this imbalance of power resulting in inequalities and environmental burdens. In practice, it means that the victims of transboundary pollutions have access to the legal system of the country that created the pollution in order to seek reparations without being subjected to discrimination on the basis of nationality, race, religion, gender, or any other characteristic. In fact, the principle of non-discrimination dictates that the state is obligated to be proactive in ensuring that vulnerable populations are protected from the environmental exploitation. It also requires that consideration is given to historical context of discrimination against certain groups and that the perpetuation of discrimination through undue burdens of environmental harm. In this way, it can be said that the principle of non-discrimination takes into account the difference between equality and equity, meaning that different groups of people may require different measures in order to have equal opportunities and outcomes. Although the case of American military pollution in Vieques is not technically a transboundary relationship due to the fact that Vieques is part of U.S. territory, this is an example of how a powerful institution can perpetuate the disenfranchisement of a less powerful group through environmental harm. The inhabitants of Vieques, being underserved Latino farmers, were already disadvantaged in relation to the American military and therefore did not have the means to resist removal from their lands. In turn, their removal and the pollution from the U.S. military activities intensified the economic disparity and had a detrimental effect on their health. In this particular case, the inhabitants of Vieques are a population historically vulnerable to discrimination and therefore should have been afforded special protections against exploitation. Clearly, the American government did not hold, uphold the principle of non-discrimination in this case. It is possible that the inhabitants of Vieques would have had been afforded more protection under an international environmental law than they were under the law of the United States. However, efforts are now being made by the U.S. government to redeem the environmental damage. The remedial efforts have so far resulted in clearance of over 110,000 unexploded ordnance, nearly 8 million other munitions-related items. The efforts to decontaminate the area are still ongoing. With additional pressure for governments to adhere more closely to the principles of international environmental law, we would hope to see more accountability for nations and corporations that pollute. With the principle of non-discrimination, vulnerable populations can have more protection from the environmental burdens offloaded by wealthier, more powerful countries. Our hope for the future is that by informing the general public about these international issues, they become less common. Thank you for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it and maybe even learned something.